Hey SEC, I just wanted to give you a short update on yesterday. I am told that we had an amazing response of commitment with several families or people still to return their cards. And it was just an overall encouraging Sunday at SEC. Now for those of you who may have missed Sunday, or you still just can't believe what you heard and you want to hear it again, in just a few moments we are going to replay the brief vision gathering from Sunday. Now I will come back at the end to give some direction on how to invest in where we are going as a church. Here's the video from Sunday. Good morning, church. Yeah, that was, boy, you're like, I can't believe you got me up on the day you spring forward. How about the text? Put, take it back, move it forward. Everybody's confused, you know. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I want to pray for us this morning first off, all right? Let's bow our heads. God, thank you for everything you are, that we can come into your presence, God. You allow us to come through those doors. Sit at your feet, God. And first of all, just to praise you, God. And then, Father, just to to come to you and, and, and seek out things, God, and seek out, uh, seek out healing, and seek out uh, things in our lives, God. And I thank you that we can do that. Father, I pray for uh, your Holy Spirit to be in this place today. Thank you for all that you're doing in our church and all that you've done. In Jesus' name. Thank you for being in and on time today. I know that some people are a little behind, so you'll have to uh, gossip the news, I guess. But as you know, if I'm calling every one of your houses, it must be a pretty big deal. And last Sunday, I got to call, it was cool, I got to call everybody, and you should have heard people, you know, whoa, what, what's going on? You know, oh, we have a new pastor coming. No, you don't have a new pastor coming. That, I wouldn't be making that phone call. Um, you know, other people, tell me, I need to know, tell me. We said, no, nope, just, just be here. And I'm very happy that you guys are here because I believe that it's big and exciting. And I can't tell you how proud I am of our church. The people who call SEC home are made up of people, and you know this, who care, people who serve, who truly desire genuine community. You can't come to a church like ours and not desire genuine community. People here love God. Our church is made up of people who are seeking to grow and be transformed by the power of Christ's resurrection. I believe that. I've seen change in so many. I've seen people reach out for so many, pray for so many, and care and help those they barely knew. And that's what a church looks like, doesn't it? The prospects of seeing that happen more and more excite myself and our leadership. Since the start of South Community Church with just six families, God has done something in these three short years that is incredible. He has built a solid base of 80 plus families who call SCC home. And we have done that portably. I've always said that if you can have, if you can have people call a church a home and there be no house, and those people are solid people. SEC, I want to say thank you for your dedication. Even though we haven't had a house, you're sitting here today because you call this church your home. That being said, myself, the elder leadership, and our ministry team believe it's time to take our next step as a church to reach more people for Jesus, to provide more opportunities for growth, to see more families change for God, to watch more marriages be rekindled under God's covering, to see more children and teenagers seek God first before what our culture says is popular, and to find the best and most creative ways to help those in need in our community. The leadership of your church is looking into the possibility of having our own church location. You can whoop whoop, yeah, I hear a couple whoop whoops. These locations will be somewhere out, way out in Sand Spring. And uh, all right, just, just lighten it up a little bit. <laughs> Land is easy out there. We can find something. These locations we're looking into will still be in the same area. This would be our space 24-7. We would have enough space for worship services, South Kids, lunch each Sunday, youth group on Wednesdays, special events, topical growth groups, service projects, 
and so much more that we haven't even thought about yet. But as Jesus tells us in Luke 14, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost and see if you have enough money to complete it? Jesus was sending a message to all those who truly wanted to be a part of the greatness and growth of God's kingdom to first count the cost. To think about what it would mean for their life. Yes, there would be a financial cost, but there would also be, more importantly, a commitment to the life of Christ's church. I believe when the latter commitment is made, then the former is not ever in question. Yes, we have been looking at some locations and the cost it would take to move our church home into a place we call our own. And it's going to take faith. It's going to take commitment. It's going to take investment. And finally, a sacrifice for us to make it happen. I want to tell you, knowing our church like I do, I think we're ready. And so does XJ. Our leadership across the board feel like we are ready and we are here today to ask you the same question. Are you ready? Are you ready to take the next step? Are you ready to step up and step out in faith like each and every one of our leadership families? Now I want you to know to make a move like this, it's going to require us all to play a part. It's going to require us all who call SCC home to hear from the heart of God and to listen and to do what he's called us all to do from the beginning. And that's to be faithful. But what does it mean to be faithful in the possibility of this move? I believe it's going to take us all accepting the challenge given by God to test him in Malachi 3.10. It's going to take us, it's going to take all of us to say with cheerful hearts, God, I am going to be faithful to you and tithe to the work of your local church. But what does tithing look like? In Deuteronomy 14, God called his people to set aside a tithe of their crops. That was one-tenth or 10% of all the crops they harvested or brought in, their income. The Israelite tithe was a dedication to God of the produce of the land. In an agricultural society, crops were the immediate token of God's goodness, and they were in turn an inevitable part of the worship. The tithe was used to grow the church through providing for the priest, maintaining and growing the places of worship, and caring for the needs of the community. The tithe as reflected in Deuteronomy 14 was given by all of Israel at the central place of worship. It was marked by joy in worship of the one and only God who symbolized the oneness of the people by stressing the fact that they all shared him. The faithful were obedient in bringing their ties to God and in turn, and in turn, were blessed by God with the abundance of the land. Church, I want you to hear me today. I'm not asking you to go above and beyond what God has already called you to do. I'm not asking you to go in above and beyond what he's already called our leadership family to do. I'm just asking for us all to give to God what is God's, to bring a tithe of dedication to him and the work of his kingdom, to share in the provision of a permanent location for our church, to invest in the spiritual future of our children and teenagers to help provide regular opportunities for our marriages to grow together the way that God meant them to be. To open our doors for those family and friends and neighbors who are hurting, who are broken, who are searching for healing. And finally, to be a church that truly seeks after building genuine community with God and each other. Today, we're going to come together we're going to count the cost before we build the tower. I think we're ready. But before we make this decision as leadership, we want you to make the decision with us. In just a little bit, you all will be receiving what we call SCC commitment cards. And I know right now you're going, here we go. Here it is. 
And you're right, this is where, here it is. These cards will give us a pretty accurate idea of whether or not in the coming year we are prepared in faith to take the next step as a church. What we are asking is this, for you to give us an honest and cheerful estimation of what your tithe to God looks like in a given month. To put it clearly, with the return of these cards, our elders will be able to accurately assess our position as a church in regards to the opportunity to take our next step. Just to remind you, I will not see these cards. I will not know who's committed to what. I remain resolute from day one that it's not important for me to know that information. But please put your name and family name on the card so our elders will know who was unable to attend today and make sure those family and individuals have the opportunity to invest in our future as well. 10% of our income is the call that God sets for us. If you are called to go above and beyond like some of our leadership families are going to do, then by all means, put that down. We are definitely not limited to 10%. There's not one of us who will get to heaven and say, we think we might have given too much to God's work. We will simply reap what we sow. Finally, church, I don't want to be a pastor that comes up and is asking for money 10 times a year. And let's be real, you don't want that either. Here's what I believe. I believe that if we are a tithing church and not just the five or 6% that is the average in the local church, but the faithful multitude, I will rarely ever have to come up and talk about money again. I really believe that. We will have plenty for those in need, the new possible location, a growing staff, healthy programs, the special experiences that we all enjoy, and caring for all the new people that God sends our way. And I believe that wholeheartedly. Today, I'd like to say a prayer over this process. I'd like for you to join with me in that prayer. I want to ask the Holy Spirit to guide and to challenge each of us as we decide what our investment in God's work looks like at SEC. Let's bow our heads this morning. Heavenly Father, you know we're doing our best to, to be guided by you, Father, to seek you first so that you would add all things unto us as a church, as leadership. Father, we've done our best to be faithful stewards, God. We've done our best to listen to your Holy Spirit. We've done our best to, to talk to one another and to seek counsel, God. We've done our best, Father, and we're just asking that you lead us and guide us. Father, we know that ultimately the, the main goal is not a new building, is not more programs, God. It's to reach more people for your son, Jesus Christ. People ask us, God, why are we doing this? What are we doing? It's a simple answer. We're doing it to reach more people for your son. Father, I pray that you lead us in that process, God. I pray that you would speak to our hearts this morning, each and every one of us. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So as you heard, we are on the search for our new home. Now, it may take a while, but just know that we are moving forward. But we can't move forward without each and every one in our church family counting the cost it will take to build the tower. Now, we have attached to this email a copy of the commitment card we used on Sunday. Now, I would ask that you print it off and you pray over what you as a family can commit to tithe to God's work at SEC. Then please return the card this Sunday and drop it in the offering basket. If you will not be at church this Sunday and you would like to send in your commitment to us, please email that information to carry at scctulsa.com. Thank you so much for your continued prayer and encouragement during this process.